In southwest China, there is a stone fortress stretching along the mountains. It looks very similar to the Great Wall of China, but the latter one is in northern China. What was this fortress built for? In today's video, I'll take you to the southern Great Wall of China in a village right next to the Great Wall that was evolved from a garrison. I'll compare the structures on the Southern Great Wall with those on the Northern Great Wall. I'll also tell you the story of the Southern Great Wall that very few people know of. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. Today I'm at the Southern Great Wall of China. You all know Great Wall. Many of you know that it's in Beijing. Few people know that in Southwest China, there is also Great Wall built in the 14th century and 45 in the 18th century. And today, I tell you the story of this Great Wall. To be precise, the Great Wall of China is not only in Beijing, but in Northern China between the Mongolian steppe and the traditional agrarian zone of China. It was the border wall between Han Chinese and nomadic tribes in Mongolian steppe. The Southern Great Wall is in the west of Hunan province. It was also a border wall. Unlike the Northern Great Wall that is tens of thousands of kilometers long, the Southern Great Wall could barely be seen on the map. Let's zoom in. Today we're here, in a small section near the border of Hunan and Guizhou province. The section of the Great Wall we're going to see today is atop this hill. Let me first compare the structures on the Southern Great Wall with those on the Jingshanling Great Wall outside Beijing. The panels of Jingshanling section of the Great Wall are very unique. They are 120 degrees angled. This design gives the soldiers a wider view and it's easier for the soldiers to hide. The panels here does not have the 120 degree angle as the ones in Jingshanling does. Thumb down. In Jinshanling Great Wall, in steep sections like this one, there are barrier walls for soldiers to hide. The barrier wall is another important feature of the defense system, and you can only find it in Jinshanling section of the Great Wall. In the steep part of the Great Wall, such as this section, the main soldiers are easily exposed to the arrows of the Mongols. So General Qi designed the barrel walls for the soldiers to hide. Bye bye. And there is no barrel wall here. Thumb down. I just climbed up this section of the wall to arrive at the top of the hill, and I was standing here. It's very beautiful, but I feel a little dizzy here. This section is very steep, and it's not friendly to people like me who have height phobia. On the top of the hill, the wall formed a circle. 
It seems like a common structure in the Southern Great Wall, but so far I've never seen similar structures in the Northern Great Wall. I'll check out this side first and then come back. I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but there is a beacon tower here. Beacon Tower is also a common structure built near the Northern Great Wall. It was the ancient signal system. Fire or smoke would be set when enemies were spotted. Can you tell which side is the outer side of the Great Wall and which side is the inner side of the Great Wall? First, let me tell you how to differentiate the inner side and outer side of the Great Wall. Pay attention to both sides of the wall. They are different. The side of the wall that has kernels is the outer side because that's the side that's facing the enemy. Right, this side is the outer side because there are kernels in this side. The land outside the Great Wall is where the Miao people is living. The Great Wall was built to separate the Miao and Han people during the Ming and Qing Dynasty. This mountainous region is home to many ethnic minority tribes. During the 13th to 18th century, most of the region were ruled by hereditary tribal leaders that were recognized by central government. So generally, it was peaceful and people got along well. However, during this period, the central government had little control over this small region in West Hunan province, whose populace was mostly Miao people. There were sporadic conflicts in the border area. In the 16th century, the Ming imperial court built the Southern Great Wall as border wall. Outside the Kranos was the uncharted territory for central government in history. But today, it's just a part of the beautiful West Hunan province. The end is a watchtower. It doesn't mean the Great Wall ends here. The Southern Great Wall had been abandoned for too long and had been severely damaged. The rest have not been restored. Let's go back to the circle atop the hill. I'm going to walk along this section and will descend from here. There is another watchtower. And this is the way down. Again, very steep. Remember this place. I'll come back to it in the second part of the video. Now I'm back to the ground where I started. This used to be the camp and training ground for the soldiers stationed at this section of the Southern Great Wall. Although it looks like the bottom of the hill, it is not. Pay attention to the gate. See, it's up in the middle of the hill. I guess the slope was relatively flat here, and when the Southern Great Wall was constructed, a camp was built here. Stone walls were constructed around the ground, as well as on the slope of the hill to form an enclosure. Further down on this road, which is pretty much parallel to the Southern Great Wall in history, there are several villages that were evolved from garrisons of the Ming Dynasty. I'm going to visit the nearest one, which is about one kilometer away. 
The village is on the slope of the hill, so I had to walk through the paddy fields. In the military system of the Ming Dynasty, soldiers provided their own food via military farms and rotated into military training as well as combat positions. So it's common for garrisons to be built near farmland. On the slope of the hill is the eastern gate of the garrison. Amiens village, right next to the Southern Great War. In history, this used to be a garrison stationed by the Southern Great War, and the village has evolved from that garrison. This is the main path of the village. Let's make a left turn here and see what's on the secondary path. The houses are made of stones. According to history book, dozens of garrisons were built during the 14th to 15th century in the region, a century earlier than the Southern Great War. It was not until the 16th century that the Southern Great War was constructed, connecting those garrisons. So this village is about the same age as the Northern Great War and is a century older than the Southern Great War. The village looks so similar to a village in the adjacent Guizhou province, which in history was a military farm of the Ming troops. I've taken you to that village in my earlier video. The houses here are made of stones for defense purpose. Remember, it was not a normal village. It was a garrison. What do you think? Do they look similar? I feel they're almost identical. This is the roof of a house in this village, made with stone slabs. And this is the roof in Tianlong Castle. Again, very similar. Both villages were evolved from military garrisons built in early Ming Dynasty in the 14th century, although they currently belong to two provinces separately. Geographically, they are in the same plate, which has similar landscape. This is what I filmed in the mountain about one hour away. The rock has natural layers, and I was like, isn't this the stone slabs on the roof? So the natural rock in the mountain should be where the stone bricks were from for both villages. Let's go back to the main path. The building in this courtyard was not a residence house, but a watchtower. It's named Guarding the Home Tower. It is much taller than the surroundings. I wasn't sure whether the wooden staircase was strong enough to support me, so I didn't climb up to the other floors. This old house was turned into a museum about the Southern Great War and the Ming military system. Very informative. And I incorporated the information throughout this video. The village pretty much ends here. Up in the slope behind is the western gate. So we almost arrive at the highest point of the village. We'll further go up to see the town gate and we'll then follow the southern great wall down to the entrance of the village.
Here we are. This is the western gate of the village. See what it looks like inside. Wow! As I was appreciating the view, I felt I saw the Great Wall on the slope of the hill far away. I zoomed in, and I believed it's this section here. The road to the village, the paddy fields, and this should be the village on the slope of the hill. I was told by a villager I could follow this wall all the way back to the entrance. There is another gate on the wall. It should be the northern gate. When I walked closer, I found the Great Wall is right behind it. Seems like the Great Wall stretches all the way to the village. This is the other side of the northern gate. The eastern gate, which was where I entered the village, is not far away. It's there. And this is the last section of the wall. But right before I approached the eastern gate, see what I found. The Great Wall is indeed connected to the village. And from this angle, it's very clear. That is the circle I walked on in the first part of the video. The wall goes to this hill and to the village. Had I not walked back to the campground, there is a possibility that I could keep going and follow the Great Wall all the way to this village. Maybe. Here, I'd like to point out another subtle difference between the Northern Great Wall and the Southern Great Wall. The Northern Great Wall was built up in the mountain following the shape of the mountain. But here, the Southern Great Wall leaves the mountain and goes to the farmland. It was because the Southern Great Wall was designed to connect the garrisons built a century earlier than the Great Wall. For the troops to be self-sufficient in food, the garrisons were usually built near farmland. Therefore, in some sections, the Southern Great Wall had to be away from the mountain. After the Southern Great Wall was almost abandoned, the real problem of this region happened in the ensuing Qing Dynasty when several large-scale uprisings broke out. The Qing court sent their best generals all the way from Beijing to suppress the uprisings, but it was not easy. The brother of the queen was even killed during a battle here. Therefore, in the 18th century, the Qing court fortified the previously abandoned Southern Great Wall and beefed up the military force here. In my next video, I'll take you to a town not far away, which in history was the original center responsible for the defense along the Southern Great Wall. The military map of the region is hung on the wall in the commanding center. The ancient stone wall is still in the town. Outside the stone wall by the river are houses built on stilts, a typical residence in southwest China and they are the most primitive stilted houses you'll find in China. Those stones in the water are another typical structure in southwest China for people to cross the river, either walking along the river bank or taking a boat would be a good way to explore this ancient town. 
I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.